I am holding an AD Tiny 85 Arduino IDE compatible microcontroller. This compatibility allows us to quickly and effortlessly establish a development environment for creating and uploading programs to it. By utilizing the readily available open source drivers and libraries, we can program the AT Tiny 85 to emulate a keyboard when plugged into a computer's USB port. This allows for automatic injection of keystrokes at a high speed, effectively transforming it into a rubber ducky. In this video, we are going to implement a couple of plug and inject examples. Along with the AT Tiny 85, I will be using a tool called Synergy HTTPX, a custom Python HTTP server convenient for hosting payloads or acting as a receiver for intercepted data. You can find the project on GitHub. Before we dive into programming the microcontroller, let's take a look at the result. I have already uploaded a program that will run the necessary commands to extract all Wi-Fi, SSIDs and passwords that the machine has been associated with and forward them back to my Synergy server. Let's plug it in. I intentionally made no effort to hide the command line window that popped up during the keyboard emulation so that we can observe what actually happens when you plug the microcontroller into a USB port. As you can see, we received the saved Wi-Fi profiles of my laptop via post and Synergy printed the data nicely to the standard output. I am running Synergy on a cloud machine. I control this machine over SSH, which is convenient because any port I open on this host is publicly accessible without implementing port forwarding, a valuable resource for security testing. Also, if you look at the command I used to start Synergy, you will notice that uh, I provided uh, private key and certificate files for the domain telemachus.com that I own and I established the server with SSL. It's not necessary to do so. You can omit dash K and dash C arguments and simply start the server with HTTP. I want to do one more example with a reversal, but let's first take a look at this Synergy HTTPX repository, which is currently private, but after this video is published, this is also going to be available. It's going to be public. And here you can find the Synergy HTTPX server that we have been using in this video and also the AT Tiny 85 templates I used to load programs in my microcontroller and uh, perform this type of attacks. I should mention that I got some templates from this repository, a much older project that has a lot of material and I, I kind of used it to expand a little bit on my ideas. We have this Wi-Fi profile grabber here as well. It's kind of older outdated maybe it didn't work at least out of the box for me i had to edit it a little bit uh, but it's definitely a project you should take a look if you're interested in this type of physical attack with the usbs and everything it's super cool and let's take a look uh, at what i used here thanks to the dg keyboard header file we can program the 80 tiny 85 to emulate the keyboard and send keystrokes or wait because Time is very essential for this type of attacks. It has to be, everything has to be synchronized. For example, uh, take a look at this. We have a send keystroke, and this is actually a combination of Windows key R, I guess, to open the run prompt. And then uh, the program waits for half a second, and then it proceeds by printing uh, this string right here, command line. Basically, it just wants to uh, write CMD and hit enter right after to open the command line. And then I actually added a greater delay from the one that the template I, I grabbed had because I think uh, it's essential to have more time here to wait for the command line to open or maybe you would have PowerShell here you could also do that with run to run a PowerShell window immediately instead of running PowerShell after in the command line that you have opened and this in on a slow machine it might take up to even five seconds especially if you use PowerShell because it's much heavier so I think uh, if I was going to do an assessment and use this uh, this bad USB or whatever I'm equipped with, I would actually add a greater uh, delay here, five seconds or something, because this would guarantee that uh, when this, uh, the actual payload is printed, it's not going to omit something because the command line was not opened yet or something like that. So let's take a look at what this PowerShell payload is doing. 
we see two variable definitions n equals f equals ra this will be used to store the names initially of the wi-fi profiles available on this system that the script is running and then this is the full list of uh, uh, key value pairs meaning ssid colon uh, password and uh, the script is, is using netsh wlan show profiles to list the available profiles on this system let's see it we can see the output is this uh, colon separated pairs all user profile colon and then name of an ssid uh, it's doing this and then it's cleaning this list it's grabbing only the value after the colon because this is the actual names of the uh, wi-fi profiles and then uh, with only the names as let's say a list we start and for each loop this in powershell is a shortcut for a for each object loop and then it's just grabbing its name and stores it into this array and then it's echoing this array if you just type a, a variable like this in powershell and, and hit enter the value of it will be echoed and then the value is echoed and it's piped into another for each object loop that we have this k because it's doing again netsh but this time with its name of every profile to grab the key in clear uh, text it's again filtering for the key content because this also outputs a lot of stuff it's splitting the column grabbing only the value and finally in this f array that we mentioned it's just adding uh, the name this represents the name of the ssid in the current iteration of these loops and uh, the value of the key and then after this is finished it's using invoke rest method to post we can see method is post with the body being this f array but joined with this break uh, tag html tag that the synergy server is going to interpret this as a new line and it's going to pretty print as we saw uh, the body of this request and that's pretty much what it's doing this payload is actually quite long for this implementation i mean in a physical pen test two seconds more or less it's a significant amount of time since you have to plug in physically something on a machine and wait for it to execute and everything so there's something we can do that will allow us to deliver uh, longer payloads much longer and uh, it will take uh, much less time to execute and this is actually something you might have already guessed we can do something like http to ex uh, for example we can host our payload we will use synergy httpx to do this and use invoke web request or invoke rest method as i'm doing here to grab uh, whatever we're hosting it might be a reversal template or something much longer and just pipe it to ex and we can just execute it and this is less than half than the previous script so it will finish uh, much faster and we can do a lot more damage or whatever let's do one more example this time we're going to use the 80 tiny 85 to request the powershell reversal script from our synergy server and execute it on the victim i'm going to use villain to generate Parcel reversal command uh, payload equals windows netcat i used um does n to set the netcat listener to port 443 which is which i already have port forwarded actually because this is a vm in my local network uh in difference with the server we're using for synergy which is in some other machine i have done ssh inside and this machine i don't need to port forward everything is public whatever port is listening on the same thing and it's really convenient and i'm going to choose this powershell reverse tcp but i've actually added an obfuscated version of this script and i forgot to add my local host and this is the script i have already obfuscated it hopefully a windows 11 defender will not catch this we will see this is the arduino id template i used to upload this program on my uh, 80 tiny 85 i'm gonna show you right after how to do this and let's just go to this synergy server actually i will need to get a second cell there this is val.space because this is something i'm using actually for testing so i have also this domain this is val.space so let's just uh save this template that we just copied from villain let's just save it here and now I'm going to my Synergy HTTPX and I'm going to set an endpoint to host this uh, malicious payload. I'm going to do serve. Uh, I want to pass the method that we're going to be requesting this with. It's get. 
uh, and also the endpoint, the path on this server that we can use to request this uh, script. I'm gonna name it rsl, and uh, the file corresponding to this is file we just created payload.txt, which must be here. And we successfully added this resource dynamically. If I do endpoints, which will list all the available resources on the server, we can see that it's added here and it's pointing to this file. So if we just request this URL with telemachos.com, here we just see the public IP for, for the server, we're gonna get this payload. And let's just try, it, try this, test it. Okay, here's the payload. We also received a GET request for this, but nothing happened because this was not executed right now. But we are gonna run it with the 80 tiny 85. I'm going to plug this in and we should get a reversal. Okay, that was fun. Let's run a few commands to see what's the OS version and uh, the antivirus state. Let's do cell for this session and I'm going to run this command. It's a, it has system info earlier, but we, you know, oh, here we go. Windows 11 Home X64. Actually, this Windows Defender product state means disabled and up to date, probably because McAfee is running on the system. This product state, I have no idea what it means, but this is not a, an antivirus evasion video. It doesn't really matter. You get the point. So let me show you how you can do all this on your own. First of all, you need to download and install the Arduino IDE. You can go to the official website, choose the operating system you're using, download the installer. It's pretty straightforward. Just follow the wizard, next, 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 and you're there. After you install it, you need to go to File uh, Preferences and add this line here, this URL to the additional boards manager URLs, and then click OK. When you do this, you'll see that things will start installing here. Just wait a little bit, it will do it on its own. You also need to install some additional uh, board managers. You can do this by going to Tools, uh, Board Manager here, or just hit Control shift b It will open up this menu. Just search for Digistamp AVR. Yeah, it's right here, this one. Just click Install. I have already installed it. You will see something popping up here. Hang on in there. You also need to visit this repository, Digistamp, Digistamp Arduino, and uh, go to releases and you can download the Digistamp drivers. You will need them to create these cool programs we made and we, you know, we hacked a little bit. Just download this zip, the drivers. Let me show you what's the deal with this. Uh, just extract it and use this DP install 64 if you have a 64 system or this if you have a 32 it will install the drivers and we're almost there let's now set up our environment we need to choose the board select other board and port okay let's search the board you need to do all this stuff is uh the digispark default 16.5 and this serial port here just click OK, and after you have set these things up, you will need some code, some template. You can grab one from my Synergy HTTPX uh, repository, or you can find plenty of others uh, on GitHub. Just choose what you want to upload to your 80 tiny 85, and just hit compile. Don't plug it in yet. Let it compile, and then it will give you a message that now you should uh, plug in your board. Plug in device now, and this is when you need to take your uh, whatever board you're using. Actually, you can do this with uh, other chips, and let's just plug it in. It will take some time, and then it will say, hey, it's ready, done, thank you. And actually, it's going to start playing immediately. So you, you see right now it's still spamming exploits here on my machine. If you liked this video, please subscribe. Leave a comment, let me know what you think, and uh, I hope to see you on my next video.